1963, the number of life threats Dr. Martin Luther King received multiplied. Racists had tried to murder him many times, yet he dodged death every time. At this, it's natural to expect that the state agencies like the FBI were all set to protect him. But unfortunately, the story is quite disturbing. Instead of protecting him, the FBI and its bureau director, Edgar Hoover, had been given a notorious mission to destroy and discredit Dr. Martin Luther King. They had made up reasons of their own which demanded an end to Martin Luther King. Unfortunately, he was assassinated in 1968, and many people doubt the FBI was behind that. It's because the Attorney General and the declassified documents have now revealed how unfairly and unethically the FBI was trapping Martin Luther King. So, what do those documents say? Welcome to a new episode of Black Culture Diary, a channel where we talk about less known and hidden black history, culture, arts, and lost civilization. We scrutinize history here to bring the black culture back on the surface again. We would like to thank you, the members of our community who have been watching our videos and supporting us. For those who are new, we encourage you to join our community in supporting and building a strong black history education medium. In this episode, we will explain how a notorious FBI Bureau director was obsessed with destroying Martin Luther King and why. Let's get started. In the early months of 1962, FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover found himself seeking approval for a sensitive and covert operation. He aimed to install wiretaps on the home and office of Stanley David Levison, a prominent lawyer based in New York City. The FBI's suspicions about Levison were rooted in his alleged association with the Communist Party of the United States of America, CPUSA, until 1956. It was the time when the United States was frightened of communism more than it had been of any other in its history. Since such was the case, the state agencies like the FBI could get approval for dirty missions just by attributing them to the communist threat. A list reaching thousands of such controversies exists where the FBI was engaged in all sorts of illegal activities. The FBI believed that Levison had shifted his influence and was acting as a key advisor to none other than Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the revered leader of the civil rights movement. As Dr. King's prominence and impact on civil rights continued to soar, the FBI escalated its surveillance efforts, utilizing the controversial COINTELPRO program and citing national security concerns as justification. However, despite their extensive investigation, they failed to uncover any evidence linking Dr. King to communism. However, during their inquiry, they stumbled upon evidence of Dr. King's extramarital affairs. Seizing upon this personal information, Hoover and his agents sought not only to discredit and undermine Dr. King's leadership in the civil rights movement, but also to use it as leverage to pressure him into taking drastic actions. Can you believe this? The FBI was spying and tapping on Martin Luther King, illegally accessing his personal information. Also, this can also be never proved that despite their spying, they could not find anything, yet they made things up. They were finding proof that could link Martin with communism, but as they could not, they were fine with at least putting their hands on minor things that could discredit Martin. It should be noted that Hoover has a personal grudge against not only communism, but also Martin Luther King Jr. And in this case, he could satisfy both of his hostilities. Throughout his extensive five decade long career, Hoover had been unyielding in his fight against communism and perceived threats to the United States. His early successes in targeting suspected communist sympathizers during the Red Scare of the 1920s propelled him to lead the FBI. As the Cold War took hold, Hoover remained steadfast in his focus on investigating individuals and groups he considered enemies of the nation, which included labor unions and figures from the entertainment industry. The FBI's interest in Dr. King dates back to 1955 when he played a pivotal role in the Montgomery bus boycott. Despite Dr. King actively speaking out against communism, he faced persistent accusations of communist affiliations throughout his illustrious career. One of his closest advisors was Stanley Levison, whom he was introduced to in 1956 through fellow civil rights leader Bayard Rustin. Levison played a vital role in the civil rights movement, providing support in fundraising, speechwriting, and securing a publishing deal for Dr. King's first book, Stride Toward Freedom. Informants provided the FBI with credible reports of Levison's alleged involvement as a significant financier for CPUSA until 1956. Although Levison had distanced himself from the party's affairs after his connection with Dr. King, Hoover remained steadfast in his belief in Levison's continued engagement. 
This led Attorney General Robert Kennedy to authorize the installation of wiretaps on Levison's premises, shortly after learning about his association with Dr. King. The Kennedy administration, including President John F. Kennedy himself, took a proactive approach, advising Dr. King personally to distance himself from Levison and another suspected communist, Jack O'Dell. Perhaps they were trying to make Martin alone by portraying themselves to be his friends. Despite terminating Odell's employment in 1963, Dr. King continued to work with Levison through an intermediary, Clarence Jones. Consequently, Robert Kennedy authorized the wiretapping of Jones's home and offices as well. The FBI's surveillance of Dr. King and his close associates raised profound ethical and legal concerns, exposing the agency's controversial tactics and sparking questions about the extent of their intrusion into the lives of public figures. Before 1963, the FBI had been hostile to Martin, yet their actions against him were not that naked. However, in 1963, Martin Luther King Jr.'s increasing fame and influence caught the attention of the FBI, prompting them to closely scrutinize his activities. Before we continue further, tell us, are you enjoying the video? If yes, please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. Following his powerful and iconic I Have a Dream speech delivered during the March on Washington in August, William Sullivan, the head of domestic intelligence within the FBI, labeled King as the most dangerous Negro in terms of communism, race, and national security. The FBI was feeling annoyed after this speech as it had made Martin an eternal leader. This the FBI could not fathom. You see, agencies like the FBI always have a sense of personal grudge against various personalities. No reason exists behind that, yet nothing could be done. Hostility toward Martin Luther King was no different. In October of the same year, Attorney General Robert Kennedy authorized the installation of wiretaps at King's Atlanta residence and the Southern Christian Leadership Conference offices, supposedly to investigate King's alleged communist ties. Yes, nobody would tell you that, but that's how Martin Luther King was being treated. But the FBI was not satisfied with this. Hence, it quickly expanded its surveillance beyond these locations, bugging and wiretapping the hotel rooms King used frequently. Their focus shifted to collecting evidence of King's extramarital affairs to tarnish his reputation and undermine his leadership in the civil rights movement. Yes, the FBI, considered one of the most powerful and competent agencies in the world, was finding proof of someone's affairs that, too, were not proven. Throughout 1964, King achieved historic milestones, including the passage of the Civil Rights Act and receiving the Nobel Peace Prize. Despite these achievements, his public criticism of the FBI's inaction regarding civil rights violations in the South led to a direct conflict with J. Edgar Hoover. In November, Hoover publicly attacked King, branding him as the most notorious liar in the country. In response, King defended himself through the media and sought a meeting with Hoover to alleviate tensions. During this tense period, the FBI took a shocking and deeply troubling step against King. Shortly after Hoover's press conference, William Sullivan drafted an anonymous letter addressed to King. The letter insinuated that the FBI possessed intimate knowledge of King's alleged sexual activities and included a tape recording that supposedly documented some of these encounters. When the letter reached King in Atlanta, he and his associates believed it was subtly suggesting that he should take his own life. Since the FBI could not handle Martin, they wanted him to commit suicide to avoid getting exposed. The letter set a 34-day deadline for the exposure of his alleged misconduct to the nation, concluding chillingly with the phrase, there is only one thing left for you to do, they correctly suspected that the FBI was responsible for the letter and the tape. Senate investigators later found a draft of the letter in Sullivan's files, although he denied any involvement and hinted that it might have been Hoover's work. This distressing incident shed light on the extent of the FBI's controversial tactics and relentless campaign against Martin Luther King Jr. The FBI's relentless pursuit of Martin Luther King Jr. went far beyond just wiretapping his home and office. Their investigations persisted until the tragic day of his assassination in Memphis, on April 4, 1968. However, the full extent of the FBI's efforts to exploit King's personal life, which included the notorious suicide letter, only came to light in 1976, four years after FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover's passing. The revelations emerged as part of the report released by the Senate Select Committee to Study Governmental Operations for Intelligence Activities, commonly referred to as the Church Committee. The Church Committee's report shed light on the FBI's tactics during their investigation of King. Surprisingly, the FBI admitted that they lacked any evidence indicating King's involvement with communism or connections to the Communist Party. Nevertheless, instead of concentrating on discrediting alleged communists who might have been attempting to influence King, the FBI took a peculiar approach. 
they sought to discredit King himself, making him the target of the Communist Party's supposed interest. In 1977, Bernard Lee, a former assistant of King, took legal action against the FBI, seeking damages relating to the Bureau's surveillance of King. During the case, Lee requested the destruction of surveillance tapes and transcripts. However, the federal judge presiding over the matter denied this request. Instead, the judge ordered the FBI to submit these materials to the National Archives, where they were sealed and kept confidential until the year 2027. Now in 2017, those additional documents can reveal what dirt the FBI tried to throw on Martin. The revelations of the FBI's campaign against King exposed the agency's unethical and illegal actions, leaving a dark mark on its history. The tactics employed against one of the most prominent civil rights leaders in American history were widely condemned as a clear manifestation of the FBI's questionable and problematic actions, fueled by an obsession to destroy a public figure. Do you think the FBI might be behind Dr. Martin Luther King's assassination? Shouldn't Edgar Hoover's personal hostility toward Martin be taken into account in the investigation for Martin's assassination? Let us know your take on that. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about, the black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.